Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.2 will be in testing within the next few days, with a planned release to live or at least open PTU by the end of June or around the end of June. The 3.17.2 patch is replacing the major patch for Q2 this year. This is because 3.18, which is the next major patch now after that, requires a huge amount of testing. In fact, two to three months testing cycle is what Cloud and Pyram have planned for that. Basically, 3.18's not ready for Q2 implementation, and it's going to start its testing cycle early July, most likely, and be planning to sort of turn up in sort of September, end of September, Q3 time. In the meantime, Alpha 3.17.2 still has a lot of features and should tide us over until 3.18 turns up. Obviously, 3.18 is going to have salvage. It's going to have the cargo refactor. It's going to have object persistence. So that's the reason you're having this um, very odd release schedule for this year. So what are we getting in Alpha 3.17.2? What's been confirmed? What's expected? And what might we get beyond that if we're lucky? New space stations and gas clouds and points of interest around them are being added, specifically more around Microtech and Arc Corp. This is to fill in some holes in the like the Lagrange points and um, space stations that should have been there so that you can travel around the Stanton system without having like a, a break where you go, actually, I need to get to a space station for refueling. Why isn't the one here? There should be one here. Um, they are also adding Reclaimer derelicts and missions associated with them around the Stanton system. You will have wrecks both in space and on the ground, and there will be narratively unique missions for them as well. But it is going to be worth exploring them. They're big ships. There's going to be a lot of loot to find around them, and they're just cool. There's also a settlement point of interest that's built out of Reclaimer, which again will have missions and loot there too. This is a proof of concept also setting the stage for additional settlements to come as Cloud and Pyram are working on things like the 600i, the Mercury Star Runner derelict, and also probably using the Javelin um, sort of wreck for settlements. And you might see some of these settlements in Alpha 3.18. But you're going to see these Reclaimer derelicts in space and on the ground. You're going to see a more built-up settlement around a Reclaimer on the ground as well, helping add to the diversity of points of interest and missions that you can do at these areas. Connected to this are also updates to the planetary navigation and nav mesh. This system allows NPCs to move around planetary surfaces using dynamically generated nav meshes. NPCs will go, I know what this object is. I know how to get around it, I know how to walk around it, I know how to chase a player around it, I know how to move into different rooms, I can patrol around this area, and eventually it will lead to them being able to chase you all the way back to a landing zone or um, come in from orbit to land, get out of their ship, attack a bunker, deploy reinforcements or whatever, get back in the ship and go off again. The implementation we're getting in Alpha 3.17.2 though is just around the Reclaimer derelict points of interest. So sort of bear that in mind. It might be around the settlement as well. Maybe that settlement's got NPCs in it um, that sort of can guard it and that sort of stuff. Um, but you're going to have um, NPCs uh, at mission locations with these derelicts as well. So bear that in mind. Um, that might make for much more deadly interesting NPCs as they are capable of moving around these points of interest and tracking the player. There's a new mission providing organization, Redwind, that will provide potentially illegal delivery missions. These missions will have greater risk, but greater rewards. You'll get access to riskier and rewardier missions after building some reputation with Redwind, doing some uh, maybe not so illegal missions for them to start with, and then some questionable ones for building up to and the sort of um, more, well, actually, we just want you to move very expensive narcotics from here to here and if you do well on those missions you're going to get more and more access to uh, as i said more riskier ones we know there's a combat service beacon update as well expanding out combat service beacon missions to have a range of difficulties between 1 and 10 the harder missions will require more powerful ships and group play to take on and the top end rarer missions maybe will have a small fleet of enemies potentially led by an idris there so when you're trying to protect a ship um, that's also called in that beacon, you're probably going to need a group. You're probably going to need um, some combat ships. Some of these missions are intended to be taken with a group of friends. Bear that in mind. 
Fortunately, as well, you'll be able to see the difficulty of the mission before you take it in the Moby Glass. So always read the mission description uh, and see um, the difficulty there. The Siege of Orison. So this is a new dynamic event in Alpha 3.17.2 and potentially its big ticket sort of item. The Nine Tails have secured various floating platforms around Orison and players will be needed there to help assault the various platforms, complete objectives, take out the Nine Tails leaders and eventually their big boss. It's a large scale mostly FPS event that players can join in while in progress in a similar manner to the Xeno Threat Dynamic event that we've had and you'll um, want to get all the help you can either um, jumping in with an org or a group or supporting other players that are doing it. I recommend some heavy armor and a range of FPS weapons as well as medical supplies and it's a good shout to bring a medi gun to help uh, sort of up friendlies that go down. Now the event may have PvP but it might not have PvP. I need to see what Cloud Imperium decide before they actually put it to live, as there certainly would have been some balance changes, tweaks, and potentially more major changes from the tests that they did uh, a little while ago around Fleet Week. We'll give you a load more details of the Siege of Orison once 3.17.2 goes into wider testing, and we can actually talk about it, and we'll go through a bit of a playthrough of it and talk about um, problems with it, how it works, what doesn't work with it, all that sort of jazz. Alpha 3.17.2 is replacing a major patch this year, which means it's still part of that 3.17 branch. This should mean it's in a more stable state. It's a more refined branch. It doesn't have a load more features. They haven't had a branch out. So that should see, at least potentially, a lot of bug fixes in this patch and less in the way of additional bugs that a new branch would bring. Another thing that you can expect is a mixture of balance updates. The Siege of Orison probably necessitates some FPS a weapon and uh, medical tweaks, but there's also various minor ship and combat changes that are likely to turn up too. So what else could we see? Well, there are various unannounced ships and vehicles that Clan and Pyram have been working on. We could see some new variant vehicle or ship in 3.17.2. Uh, it's very possible we will see some additional missions or tweaks to current ones. There could be some more minor features that Clan Imperium have yet to reveal, like additional NPC behaviours, maybe some new items, armour, components, that sort of thing. Typically, Clan Imperium makes some patch watch posts on Spectrum during testing that go into details of some of these more minor features, um, and we'll check those out once we have them. We do know that Clan Imperium want to slow down ships for dogfighting, so that ships are in closer proximity when um, sort of uh, fighting and there's less jousting. This level of combat rework or steps towards it isn't entirely off the cards in 3.17.2, um, but it might be something that they plan to implement later in the year. We know that Clan and Pyram have been working on Gen 12 updates for improved CPU and resource usage, uh, but also generally a more optimized set of visuals and engine. It's likely that we will see some more bits turn up in 3.17.2 for that. Hopefully, um, solid sort of performance. A um, little bit better performance, um, more stable servers, things like that. It's also very possible we will see Jump Down, the Nine Tails Lockdown, and or Xeno Threats turn up during the 3.17.2 cycle. Don't expect a um, reset for 3.17.2, and we should keep all your ships and Alpha UEC, all that sort of jazz. Now, it's much more likely, or at least very, very possible, that we will see a persistence and full reset in 3.18 as they sort of have to update databases and that sort of stuff. That's not a confirmation, that's just a, it's reasonably likely, or at least more likely than it has been for some of the um, other patches. Boom! That's it for your Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.2 release plans and update. But what do you think? Will we have a nice stable build for 3.17.2 live? Will it be low buggy, no, no buggy, or some buggy? Uh, are the features and dynamic event in 3.17.2 good enough to tide us over until 3.18? Are you really looking forward to 3.18? Or do you think its testing cycle is going to be full of terrible, terrible problems and that they're going to have to push it back into um, sort of Q4 or something? You can probably expect there will be a minor ship sale when 3.17.2 launches. Normally this focuses on ships or vehicles that have just been released or have seen updates in a patch or are very useful for a given patch. So what do you think we could see here? Are there any other features or tweaks you'd like to see in Alpha 3.17.2? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Hello, it's me! 
the Queen. It's my Platinum Jubilee this year, and safety and security are paramount. Lots of people ask me why we need a Queen and NordVPN. I defend the world with my scepter and crown, preventing those who would do it harm from carrying out their evil deeds, channeling the power of NordVPN.com forward slash board gamer and my divine right, I can overcome any obstacle, and so can you, by using the links below to get great deals and better internet accessibility, security, and encryption acidosity. I don't know what that word was that I was trying to say, but I am the queen! I will never be defeated! Just like NordVPN.com sword slash board gamer. That wasn't the queen at all. It was me. It was board gamer. I've got to say this at the end, actually, now, just in case someone says I'm impersonating the queen. Try to get her, but she was too busy. She says got like a busy weekend or something. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For June, we're giving away the newly released RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This is a two-seater X-Wing styled ship with a powerful loadout and a turret that can move from the top to the bottom of the ship, giving it a much better range of firing arcs. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the description below. Please also consider supporting the channel by becoming a member with the join button under my videos, or becoming a Patreon, or even donating with thanks button or donations in the descriptions below. Star Citizen is getting more and more flesh on its bones, and there's always news coming out, and we love to cover that, and we're only able to do that because of all of you watching, and all the amazing people that go the extra mile. Whether it's commenting, sharing our videos, chucking money at us, or whatever, thank you so much. I hope you have a great June, please take care, and I'll see you in the verse.